What's going on? What's hot? What's hip? What's happening? What's shaking on your Tuesday? Hope you're having a good one. And uh, I'm going to tell you about We Are the World today. And and we're going to do our first reaction video and see if YouTube clobbers me for it. They shouldn't because I'm going to be stopping it every three seconds. But uh, we're going to try one anyway. You know what I'm saying? Akumugan is here and he's saying, if it weren't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. Gloom, despair, and agony on me. For you hee-haw folks, you know. <laughs> Fred Hollywood I was just about to get through the show spiel. And I saw his posting. Is this the Sally Jesse Raphael show? Do these glasses look red? Anyway. Uh <laughs> Oh, I got a special backdrop here for USA for Africa. Yeah, there's all the s signatures. Anyway, um, hey, you can go to the com. There's 270 podcasts there, one of which is likely to entertain you briefly. Uh, you can also go to our merchandise store there, or you can just go to cafepress.com slash Show. It's in the crawl there. Uh, you can get, like Terry Need did, a 20-ounce coffee mug. 
he put a quarter in there for scale. It's truly mammoth. There's smaller ones. We we sell smaller coffee mugs. Oh, 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 by the way, I get an email from Cafe Press every day, and they always tell me what's discounted on their site. I think right now mugs are discounted to some amount. I don't know what the amount is. I didn't check into it, but I think they're cheaper than normal. Anyway, I always mean to tell you guys about that stuff. Never forget. Um, <laughs> hee-haw. <laughs> That's just your life. Uh, Joker says, hello, everybody. Hello, Joker. Um, by the way, we are not monetized. We're, we're getting there slowly. We haven't gotten any donations in quite a while. Really would like some. Uh, PayPal.me slash Tom Gully Show. If only to... You know, John Melendez makes more in one show than I've made since I started this. That's hard for a person's ego to take. Really is. Um, anyway, or you can go to Patreon and get some of the stuff. I'm too way too frightened to put. Uh, that side's okay. It's this side that's giving me trouble. Oh, well. Uh, Randy Ramos, he's an official chef and he is in the house. So there's all that stuff. Going to wait another two or three minutes, see if we get a few more people in here and then we're going to go through We Are The World. We Are The World is a little different than, uh, than Live Aid. You know, Live Aid, all the bands were going to come and they were going to just do their thing, right? And so there wasn't a lot of contention and a lot of egos clashing because it was just, eh, maybe somebody wanted to go on before another person. Ever said, but there wasn't any of that. This is a little different. There's a little difference here. We had people walk out of this thing that were in the studio. We also had, well, I'm just teasing it a little bit, but we we also had people that had agreed to do it, but one of the organizers was such a jerk to them uh, that they didn't do it. Mm-hmm. All that stuff happened. And I'm going to tell you about it. I am. Let's get some of the, get some of the stuff up. There's all the people that were in it. There's a lot of people there. Some of them in this list, and I'm going to go right to the first one, Dan Aykroyd. He didn't sing as a vocalist uh, solo. But he was in the chorus. So, see, I only know We Are the World from O&A. Oh, man. Well, it was during the MTV era, so it was gigantic. It was gigantic. Well, there's Miss Lynette Miller. She says, hello, Tom Gully peeps. Good to see Lynette. Let's see here. Toby McGroby says, saying hi to people. We, we love it when people say hi to people. Say hi to people. Let me see here. I have to keep alerted to the news, you know. Now that I'm news guy, I've got to be Mr. News Guy. Well, doesn't look like they're saying. I tell you what, I'm still coming down off the thrill last week of doing middays news anchoring at uh, the big giant radio station here in Dallas. Still living off the vapor of that experience. So anyway, why don't we just get to this? I better open up my thing. I know how much you guys love it when I open up my thing. Uh, There we go. Pretty soon my thing will be open and we can get this going. We can get this going. Okay. Let me tell you about We Are The World. Which was a charity single. Now, some people think the band was called We Are the World. No, they were called USA for Africa. USA for Africa is the biggest super group ever assembled. True, only for one song, but they're the biggest of all time. Okay, not even close. So, before We Are the World was recorded, a British supergroup called Band Aid had recorded, and we talked about this uh, when we talked about Live Aid, a song called Do They Know It's Christmas. 
So in December of 84, musician, and many of you will not remember this musician, but he was also an actor named uh, Harry Belafonte, who basically became an activist for charitable causes at a certain point. He decided he wanted to form an American supergroup for famine relief in Africa. So what happened was he contacted this entertainment manager and fundraiser named Ken Cragen, who had some clients, one of which was Lionel Richie and one of which was Kenny Rogers. And those two got Stevie Wonder to add some value to it. Quincy Jones was drafted to uh, co-produce this thing. And he was actually working on a movie, <laughs> The Color Purple. He left that to do this for a while. And then Quincy Jones got on the phone and he called Michael Jackson. Now, before I get too far into this, Quincy Jones, if I had to pick out one person that was the driving force to getting this song made, it would be Quincy Jones. He was the guy that everybody respected. You know, he was a great producer, great musician. And everyone respected him. And more importantly, he didn't have a dog in the fight in terms of I need to look the best out of all these people because you have huge egos of all these super musicians. Now, Michael Jackson, you guys remember him, right? Michael Jackson told Lionel Richie, I want to help write this song. Well, if you're Lionel Richie, what are you going to say? You say, okay, Michael. So Michael Jackson, technically, and Lionel Richie wrote this song, even though, as you will see, there were other people collaborating sort of along the way, okay? So Stevie Wonder was originally going to be one of the writers, but he couldn't do it because he was songwriting for a movie called The Woman in Red. So Michael Jackson, Lionel Richie write this song at Havenhurst, which was the Jackson family compound in Encino, California. And they wanted a song that would be easy to sing. They wanted it to be obviously memorable and they wanted it to be somewhat anthemic. So for a week, they spent every night working on lyrics and melodies in Jackson's bedroom. Uh, Latoya Jackson said, I'd go into the room while they were writing. It'd be very quiet, which is odd since Michael's usually very cheery when he works. It was very emotional for them. And she later said that Michael had written most of the lyrics. Uh, Lionel Richie recorded two melodies for We Are the World. And Michael Jackson added music on that same day. And Michael said, I love working quickly. I went ahead without Lionel knowing. I couldn't wait. I went in and came out the same night with completed song, drums, piano strings, and words to the chorus. So Michael Jackson presents this demo to Lionel Richie and Quincy Jones, who were both shocked. They didn't expect this to be done so fast. And then the next meetings between Jackson and Richie were pretty zero. They didn't make any new uh, vocals. Uh, nothing really got done. And so on the night of January 21st, 1985, the night before the first recording session, okay, Lionel Richie and Michael Jackson completed the lyrics and the melody. So the first night of recording, January 22nd, 1985, huge amounts of security on hand, Richie. Jackson, Wonder, Jones. They started work on We Are the World at Kenny Rogers' Lion Share Recording Studio, which is on Beverly Boulevard in Los Angeles. There were session musicians, technicians, video crews, assistants, organizers, as these celebrity musicians entered. So Jones hired session musicians, which are just sort of hired guns, but they're normally used for albums and they're known to be incredible. You know, they don't, you don't have to worry about these guys. Um, Richie sat down on the piano to teach everyone the song. And when, when it's time to roll tape, um, one of the musicians, John Robinson, who is the drummer, cleared the room of everyone who was not a musician. 
And that's when they recorded the backing tracks. And after this, a vocal guide of We Are The World, which was recorded by Lionel Richie and Michael Jackson, mixed with the instrumental tracks, was duplicated on tape for each of the performers that was invited. And that guide, it took them six takes to get it perfect. And because Quincy Jones says, we these other versions are too much. They're, they're just too much. So after their work on the this vocal guide, they gave everybody to go and learn it. Um, Lionel Jackson, Jack, Lionel Jackson, Michael Jackson, and Quincy Jones started thinking of alternatives for one of the main, you know, repeating lyrics in the song. There's a chance we're taking, we're taking our own lives. That, that was in the song a lot. And the two of them were concerned that the line would be considered a reference to someone harming themselves. So as the group listened to a playback of the chorus, Richie declared that the last part of the line should be, we're saving our own lines lives and jones also suggested altering the first part with with uh, another line because he said we don't want to sound like we're patting ourselves on the back so it's really there's a choice we're making and that's how the line there's a choice we're making we're saving our own lives came to be around 1 30 in the morning the four musicians ended the night by finishing a chorus of m melodies uh, vocally including this was controversial the the sound shalom shalinge shalom shalinge shalom shalinge and jones told the group they were not to add anything else to the tape and said if it gets too good somebody's going to start playing it on a radio on january 24th they gave everybody a day of rest jones shipped this vocal guide to all the artists who would be involved in the recording and enclosed in these packages was a letter from Quincy Jones imploring begging the artist not to share the tape or make a copy he wrote in the years to come when your children ask what did mommy and daddy do for the war against famine you can proudly say this was your contribution now that manager Ken Cragen chaired a production meeting on Sunset Boulevard on the 25th of January. And that's where his team discussed where the recording sessions to, would be held. Cragen was concerned that a leak in the location would trigger a paparazzi frenzy and then it would drive everybody away. Jones disagreed, saying, well, we're trying to put a watermelon in a Coke bottle. We can't do it. Just, we just, we can't. We just, there's gonna be that. So the following evening, Richie, Lionel Richie held a choreography session at his home and it was decided who would stand where. And as you guys will see in the video, this was actually choreographed. It was not happenstance that they just set up microphone. <clears throat> the final night of recording was held January 28th, 1985 at A&M Recording Studios in Hollywood. Michael Jackson arrived at eight o'clock earlier than anyone else, <clears throat> excuse me, to record his solo section and record a vocal chorus alone. And then he was joined by the remaining artists, and you'll see them all in the video I'm gonna show, but, and I'm gonna read them to you as well, because more people are in the chorus, a lot more, big stars, that are not in the actual vocal solo part of the song. You had Ray Charles, Billy Joel, Diana Ross, Cindy Lauper, Bruce Springsteen, Tina Turner, and a bunch of the Jacksons. And many of these people came straight from an American Music Awards ceremony that had been held that very night. Now, here's some controversy, our first controversy. Prince, who would have had a part in which he and Michael Jackson sang to each other, didn't attend. One newspaper said that Prince didn't want to record with other acts, and another from the time of the We Are The World recording, suggested that he did not want to partake because the organizer, Bob Geldorf, called him a creep. I tend to think the second one is true because there's, I've researched this today, there's a lot of people who go into that whole thing. 
During the session, Richie spoke with Prince on the phone and declined Prince's offer to play a guitar solo in a separate room. Instead, Prince donated an exclusive track for the Tears in Your Eyes to the We Are the World album. Because let's keep in mind, this was just a single. There was a whole album that they made. Stevie Wonder had asked Eddie Murphy to participate, but Murphy declined because he was busy recording his single, My Girl Likes to Party All the Time, Party All the Time, Party All the Time. <laughs> uh, Murphy later said afterwards that when he realized what it, it was, this big, you know, single, he felt like an idiot. <clears throat> More than 45 of America's top musicians participated and another 50 had to be turned away. There was a sign taped to the studio door that read, check your ego at the door. Stevie Wonder greeted musicians as they entered and said if the recording was not completed in one take, he and Ray Charles would drive everybody home. There was somebody else, and I think it might have been Tina Turner, who said if a bomb went off in this room, John Denver would be back at top of the charts. <laughs> Every performer took their position around 1030 that night, and they began to sing. Now, several hours passed before Stevie Wonder announced he would like to substitute a line in Swahili for Shalom Shalinge. And that caused Waylon Jennings to leave. A heated debate ensued in which several artists also rejected the suggestion. The Shalom Shalinge sound ran into opposition as well and was removed, at which point Waylon Jennings returned and participated in the recording. The participants eventually decided to sing something meaningful in English. They chose to sing the new line, One World, Our Children, which most of the people in the room went, yeah, that's awesome, that's perfect. In the early morning hours, two Ethiopian women who were guests of Stevie Wonder were brought in. They thanked the singers on the behalf of their country, and it brought the room to tears. Stevie Wonder attempted to lighten the mood by joking that the recording session gave him a chance to see Ray Charles saying, we sort of just bumped into each other. The solo parts were recorded without any problems, and the final version was completed at 8 a.m. So uh, I could get into the arrangement, but I'm going to show the video anyway. So you're going you're gonna to see it. Um, the performers were really thrilled with the combinations and the way the whole thing was set up. There was no one that had a problem with it. Uh, the structure is said to create a sense of continuous surprise and emotional buildup because you, you are surprised as you see this thing. I remember the first time I saw it, it's like, oh, wow, there's so-and-so. Oh, wow, there's so-and-so. You know, it was cool. Here are some people that sang in the chorus that were not in the actual individualized solos. Dan Aykroyd, Harry Belafonte, of course, Lindsey Buckingham, right, from Fleetwood Mac, uh, Johnny Cola, Sheila E., a little representative from the Prince camp, Bob Geldof. Okay, we get it, Bob. This is your thing. Um, Jackie Jackson, Latoya Jackson, Marlon Jackson, Randy Jackson, Tito Jackson, Waylon Jennings, Bette Midler, John Oates of Hall & Oates, Jeffrey Osborne, Anita Pointer, June Pointer, the Pointer Sisters, Ruth Pointer, all three of the Pointer Sisters, and Smokey Robinson. Okay? Uh, I'm not going to go through the, the rest of... Uh, I'm going to show the video in just a couple seconds here. I, I better get some more uh, pictures up for you guys. Uh, here's, here's a little post-recording thing with one of the sweatshirts. That's Cindy Lauper uh, with one of the people at the recording. On March 7th, 1985, We Are the World was released as a single in both 7-inch and 12-inch formats. The song was the only one released from the album at that time and became a chart success around the world. I will get to that as, as well. In the U.S., it was a number one hit on the R&B single's chart, the adult contemporary. 
uh, charts, the Billboard Hot 100, where it remained for a month, the single had debuted as number 21 on the uh, Hot 100. It took four weeks to claim number one, about half the time it normally takes a single to get to that pot spot. Sorry, of the on the Hot 100, the song moved from 21 to five to two, and then to one in just the four weeks. Um, it might have reached the top 100's number one spot sooner, if not for the success of Phil Collins' One More Night. Uh, it also entered the Billboard Top Rock Tracks and the Hot Country Singles chart, where it peaked at number 76, country. Uh, it became the first single since the Beatles' Let It Be to enter Billboard's Top 5 within two weeks of release. Outside the United States, the single reached number one in Australia, France, Ireland, New Zealand, the Netherlands, Norway, Sweden, Switzerland, and the UK. Peaked at number two in Germany and Austria. Germany and Austria, don't, don't you think you, you guys have a little the PR problem there? You couldn't let it peak at number one? It was also a commercial success. The initial shipment of 800,000 We Are The World records sold out within three days of release. The record became the fastest selling American pop single in history. At Tower Records in West Hollywood, 1,000 copies of the song were sold in two days. Um, normally, a number one single sells about 100 to 125 copies a week. So, by the end of 1985, We Are the World had become the year's best selling single. Five years later, it was real that the song had become the biggest single of the 80s. We Are the World, eventually cited as the best single in U.S. and pop music history from a sales standpoint. The song became the first single to be certified multi platinum. It received a four times a certification by the Recording Industry Association of America, and the estimated global sales of We Are the World are said to be 20 million singles. So there you go. Uh, the humanitarian aid, um, they did a, a, a really, really good job. Um, they set a goal of $50 million. Uh, incidentally, the record sales were amazing. The merchandise sales were off the chart. Uh, off the chart. At any rate, they set a goal of $50 million. And by October, remember this came out in March, it was revealed that the $50 million target had been met and exceeded. CBS Records alone gave USA for Africa a check for $2.5 million. Um, and since it's a release, it's, really, it's uh, uh, generated what's about $214 million today. So there are some notable live uh, performance of this and um, the you know sort of political legacy of this song has, has had quite an impact throughout the years. But um, so you... you U.S. Billboard Hot 100, it was number one. U.S. Adult Contemporary, number one. U.S. Hot Black Singles, number one. U.S. Hot Country Songs, well, 76. It's not exactly a Johnny Cash tune. Uh, U.S. Hot Dance Disco 12-inch Single Sales, number one. U.S. Mainstream Rock, this is not a rock song, number 27. U.S. Cash Box Top Singles, number one. Um, you know, it, it just it smashed all the records, basically, is what we're saying here. All right, let's see here. Uh, get to the video that we'll react to. And I will make this transformative so certain platforms shouldn't really have a problem with it sorry there's a pre-roll going on right now and then we'll we'll react to this video then i'll get to your chats then i'll open the phone lines and then i'll make a chimichanga because i didn't go to the grocery store and get parmesan today 
Okay, here we are. Now, I mean, I'm even going to lower the volume on this so that I, I just don't want to take any chances that YouTube goes, hey, buddy. Hey, mister. Hey, man. He's up. All right, let's get Cindy. Um, by the way, there's Stevie Wonder. And there's the whole gang right there. <clears throat> that was the group photo that they took. So, yeah, yeah. I'm going to show the video, though, so who cares? All right. I'll be stopping this quite frequently, by the way. I'll be stop stopping it very frequently. Very frequently. I'm going to turn the sound up just a little bit. I mean, if they're going to nail me, they're going to nail me, I guess. I'll turn it down a little bit. All right, here we go. Now, this is the opening, and they're going to show us... The globe, right? And then it morphs into the USA for Africa and all the signatures. I can remember this by heart from when it was on, okay? Now watch all the signatures come on. And that was back before, you know, you really couldn't... There's Anita Pointer, Ray Charles, there's Diana Ross, uh, there's John Oates. Toya Jackson, some of them you just can't. There's Kim Carr and Smokey Robinson. Some of them you, Daryl Hall, you can't make out at all. Cindy Lauper, Lindsey Buckingham, that is. Okay, so Lionel Richie, I think, opens this up. And one of the interesting things is when I watch the... Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. I have to make myself teeny tiny like Vince the Lawyer so you guys get a better picture of this. I'm going to make myself teeny tiny. My teeny tiny enough there. Now, yeah, you guys can see it like this. That'd be another reason they would hammer me, probably. We'll do it like this. This is my first reaction video. I don't want to get any trouble. Um, okay, so one of the most interesting things about watching reaction videos to people in their 20s or maybe even their 30s that have never seen this is who they recognize and who they don't recognize. And another interesting thing is the number of artists that are still well-known today that are in this video. So, here we go. Okay, here we are. There comes a time this, of course, is Lionel Richie. When we heed a certain call, when the world and he's joined by Stevie Wonder there, as right? As There's he and, and Stevie harmonizing. There are people dying. Oh, Stevie. Oh, it's time to lend a hand. Now, a lot, a lot of younger people, unless they've done reaction videos, uh, many of them do reaction videos to Kenny Rogers, but a lot of them did not know who Paul Simon, who's there on the left, even was. Okay? And, and then many of them didn't also know who Kenny Rogers was. To Now, who's that, everybody? This is one of the two people that none of the youngsters get. None. And I have to admit, he's not an easy one. Even though two-time Grammy guy, two-time nominee for Academy Award Song of the Year, and uh, I think he went into producing and doing other things, but that's Jeffrey Osborne standing next to Tina Turner there. And a lot of people are like, I didn't know who that was. I mean, that Tina Turner, obviously, iconic look, an incredible voice. And then some, but not all, a few, don't recognize Billy Joel because he's got the beard and the longer hair from back in the 80s. Here's Tina. We are the and all Billy does is harmonize with her. Now here we go. This is important because there are the socks of Michael Jackson. 
Michael Jackson during the production of this, not in a joking way. I mean, he, he said, Banner said, all they're going to have to show is my socks. Show Bruce Springsteen's socks and see if anybody knows who it is. <laughs> anyway, here's, here's Michael. And then this is from the solo track that he did earlier. Uh, might point out that the next person to sing, and I believe Michael does uh, harmony with her, is one of Michael Jackson's biggest idols. That, of course, from the Supremes and a huge solo artist herself, Diana Ross and Michael Jackson worshipped Diana Ross. Absolutely worshipped her. And you know Michael said, we definitely, I definitely have to harmonize with Diana Ross and we have to be on screen together. Here comes Diana Warwick. Dionne Warwick, sorry. A lot of people didn't know who she was. Dionne Warwick. Although, I was talking about it the other day to somebody, and we started looking up Dionne Warwick's actual, you know, discography. She had way more hits and way more later than you might think. Here he comes. There's Willie. And their lives will be stronger and free. Is there, is there, Willie Nelson, not that many voices that all, you hear that voice and there's no question who it is. Now here's another one. This guy's a huge favorite of mine uh, and was gigantic for a while, but not a lot of the youngsters were familiar, some, but not all, with uh, uh, Al Jarreau. And so we all must lend a helping hand. And then Springsteen is, is just, I think, uh, Born in the USA had just come out. <clears throat> Was it in 84? But you've got all these pretty melodies, melodies, and he just comes in like a cement truck. And I don't mean that in a bad way, but he just cuts through. We are the world. We are the children. We are the one to make a brighter day. So let's not give in. And they follow Springsteen up with Kenny Loggins, you know, super all over the place. Really, really clean, awesome singer. Danger Zone. And that's a great thing about this song is you never thought you would ever see Kenny Loggins, Steve Perry, and Daryl Hall kind of trading licks. You know, uh, it's, it's pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. And then here comes uh, Michael to give us a little, a little kick of Motown. Okay, and then... This particular segment right here, and you can see outtakes of all this stuff on YouTube. They did this several times, and the reason they did it was um, they thought that, that the performance was flat, and so they asked Cindy Lauper to just extemporize, and she did it several times, several different ways, and then they got this way and said, we're done. They didn't do any more after this one. Huey Lewis. Oh, 
Uh, it's interesting to see Cindy Lauper hop up to the mic and try all these different versions, some of which didn't work very well at all. But then she nailed that one. And that last person that you saw there was Kim Carnes, who had a number of very large commercial hits, probably most notably uh, Betty Davis Eyes. But um, Huey Lewis was giant at the time, too, man. He was just a monster artist. Now we're to the chorus. And there's uh, Quincy Jones leading them all. Al Jarreau, Lionel Dion, Kenny Rogers, and Kim Carnes. Dion Moore, uh, sorry, Diana Ross, Stevie Wonder. That's a John Oates looking very much like Quincy. John Oates looking very much like, why didn't I get to sing in this song? Daryl got to sing in this song. Uh, but yeah, but here's Quincy. Let's get Quincy up here. He was the driving force kind of behind this whole thing, at least in keeping everybody on, on task. There's Smokey Robinson. There's all the Jacksons. Dylan was one of the people that couldn't be there for the big group thing, so he, or maybe he asked to do it by himself. There's Dan Aykroyd in the back. See him there with Harry Belafonte and Lindsey Buckingham? That's a pretty good chorus, if you can. There's Aykroyd and Belafonte. Here comes Ray Charles, I believe. Now, uh, this particular section, <clears throat> uh, I think that the, the story is that Stevie was going to go back and forth with someone, and they couldn't really settle on who to do it, and they finally said, why don't we let Bruce do this, because the contrast would be amazing, you know, instead of two very melodic people get get Springsteen in there and just get raw, you know, unmitigated emotion. By the way, Stevie Wonder's albums, like starting in the mid 70s all the way to the early 90s, are all incredible. Fulfilling this first finale and the Secret Life of Plants and all of that stuff, it's just spectacular off the charts. And on YouTube, there are some sort of um they're live performances but they're not concert performances they're like in a tv set or something that are just living for the city or superstition or, oh he, he's off the charts brilliant
More of the Jackson family. Can't get enough. There's Bette Midler. Harry Belafonte. Harry Belafonte, known for the Banana Boat song, I think. I mean, he was a calypso y singer. And he was an actor, too. People forget that. But there's him and Dan Aykroyd. Somewhere here, you will see Waylon Jennings in this, in this crowd. It's Jeffrey Osborne. Yeah, that's Jeffrey Osborne, the one that everybody forgets. And you see him and he's like, what? Oh, yeah, 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 Jeffrey Osborne. That- very, very accomplished guy with amazing songs. I want those glasses, man. Can you imagine, let's go back just a second here. Can you, like, like imagine if you took the combined album sales of all of those people right there, <laughs> what it would be, or just the people in this video. Insane. All right, that that's pretty much the song right there. I I, I don't want to want to press my luck since this is my first reaction video, but uh, you know you're never going to see a group like that again. I don't think. I do not think. So anyway. whatever you do, whatever you do, have a pre-roll for it. Make people mad. Um, let's see here. Let's start getting some of your chats. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the story and the reaction to the video of We Are the World. Uh, let's see here. SG Fanboys here says, Hello, flock of seagullies. Uh, many unsanctioned nicknames for the followers of this program. I found O and A after they'd both been fired, Osley, because of Lazlo joke. Uh, seagullies, that's another new one. Welcome. Well, that's Toby. That's actually SG Fanboy with a different name. Uh, Paz the Patriot says, "Hey Tom, sorry I'm late." Paz, we go over this every show. You're not late. Nobody's ever late. Uh, Toby McGrovey says, "Akumugan, I caught on sound." Okay. Uh, Lynette, former Miss Tom Gully show. Two years running. We haven't had another one since. So I guess you're the reigning whatever. Uh, yes, Havenhurst. Been there many times. Yeah, it's a nice place. It's a nice place. They have good craft service there. Whoa, almost spilled my energy drink. Uh, Aku caught them around 2011. Okay. Let's see here. Um, I know of them. So Nine Ish download the best of the worst three years back. Highly recommend listening to Laszlo's show, 52 episodes. Uh, okay, it's a commercial for somebody else's show in my show. Thanks a lot. Um, oh, by the way, you go to the Tom Gully Show, 270 podcast. One of this, one of them you're sure to enjoy. Also, um, you can go to our merchandise store, which is on the TomGullyShow.com page, or you can just go to CafePress.com slash the Tom Gully Show. And um, then there's PayPal.me. Slash Tom Gully Show. We desperately need some. Uh, every night I go after the show and I look and the cupboard is bare. Uh, or you can go to our Patreon, three bucks a month. Plastic Ono's band, Get Piece of Chance, done in a hotel room with some friends, was remarkable in its own right. Lyndon, you are correct. And by the way, there were some people in that chorus as too that were a little un. I think Tommy Smothers was in there and some other people. Uh, SG says hit with the thumbs up. Uh, Randy says, I like John Denver. Well, many of us do, but by 1985, he wasn't exactly burning up the charts anymore. Mm. 
The Wolf, Kim Warfield, who sends me the most awesome videos. Uh, Stevie Wonder has driven a car, an aqueduct running along uh, 110 Highway in L.A. The Wolf sent me an incredible uh, video on uh, the history of F1. He's a big F1 fan. Fareed RV says, oh, my God, that screeching. Cindy, whatever her name is. God, is she awful in this. Hey, now, doing her best. Wolf says, I think that guy next to Cindy might be an actor. Huey Lewis? No, it's Huey Lewis from Huey and Lewis in the news. He looks like the Superman guy, but not him. Are you talking about in the chorus or when they were doing the song? Because right next to Cindy Lauper is Huey Lewis from Huey Lewis in the news. Uh, sorry, Cindy Lauper. Uh, that guy looks very familiar. Yeah, it's Huey Lewis. Of Huey Lewis and the News, who had, well, they had Sports was a big hit album of theirs, but uh, I used to, man, I used to work out to that uh, Huey Lewis album. Uh, Oops, thought you meant in the music video, says Toby. I think we're all confused now. Um, No, I have Sports from Huey. All right. Nun Nun says, happy to be here. Happy to be here as well, Nun Nun. Christina Costello has enjoyed us, uh, has enjoyed us, has joined us. How about that instead? Uh, Why did they make this song, Tom? It was to benefit famine in Africa, to try and end that. And they generated quite a lot of money in that uh, pursuit. Looks like Michael Jackson. Well, that's Michael Jackson. Is that Teddy Pendergrass? Well, Teddy would be sitting... Tag, you're it. Hit and run. See you tomorrow. Peace. Kenny. Kenny Loggin? Hi, Tom. I'm just letting you know, mate. My mom is back in the hospital. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that, Peter. I am so sorry to hear that. I, I hope uh, I hope she's on the mend and, and things are looking up. So uh, hearts are with you, Peter. The wolf says, if you aren't monetized, you have nothing to lose. Wow, Paul Simon, he had diamonds on the soles of his shoes. He sure did. And he's still crazy after all these years. Uh, Let's see here. What year was that video? 1985. Tim Jenkins says, it's amazing how much the world has changed since then. It really is, man. It really is. Didn't Michael and Prince have issues with each other? Well, some people thought that. <clears throat> but I don't know that they personally did. I, I think there was some attempts by the media to play them off against each other. But Michael Jackson had a habit of just calling people that he was beefing with and stuff. So I would have to look into that. But I don't know that for sure. Christina says, this takes me back. Yeah, it takes me back, too. I remember laughing at Michael Jackson's unimpressed face when Huey and Cindy jumped in. Ah, you know, they're just doing their thing. They're popular, trying to help out. But you can see Cindy Lauper taking a couple cuts at that uh, extemporaneous part of it until they got the one they like. Um. There it is, says Toby McGroby. Lynette says, was a beautiful song. Yes. And I remember the first time I saw it, I was at my girlfriend's house, and it was just like, oh, my gosh, there's so... I mean, it was just, you know, you just couldn't believe all those people got together in one room. Joker says, that's Baba Booey Oates. (laughs) It is. Springsteen part in this is fantastic, says Fareed. Yeah, I mean... You did have some unconventional voices in there. You had you had Willie Nelson and and Huey's voice, maybe uh, Lewis, not that conventional. Um, but you just had a lot of soulful, brilliant melodic singers in it. And so when you get Bruce just cutting through there like a marauding eye beam, it it, it, it worked. Uh, Terry Nee says Dionne Warwick sang Fortune Telling. Yeah, she also uh, sang Message to Michael and Do You Know the Way to San Jose. And what was that song? That's What Friends Are For. She had a lot of hits. 
And wasn't she on the Psychic Friends Network or did an ad for it? Uh, the Wolf says, I still have Stevie in Muscle Beach Party. Introduced as Little Stevie Wonder at nine years old. Yep, he was Little Stevie Wonder at first. Kahuna's arrived. Hey, gang, people saying hi to Kahuna. By the way, let's see here. Uh, okay, people saying hi to Kahuna. Ramen noodles, Tom. We've all been there one time or another. Yeah, oh, God, I can't have that. I'd rather eat dirt with cheese on it than ramen noodles. Ah, I just got back last night. Check out Stevie Wonder's 1963 live version of Fingertips. Amazing. Uh, if you want amazing, uh, check out Glenn Campbell and Stevie Wonder doing... Um, I think it's the times they are a changing or something. You just have to type in Glenn Campbell and Stevie Wonder. And Stevie was on the Glenn, time, <clears throat> Glenn Campbell Good Time Hour. You will be thrilled by Stevie Wonder. You will be amazed by Glenn Campbell at the high notes he was hitting and the guitar he is playing. I Definitely tonight go to YouTube and look that up. Peter Lake wants to know what I'm drinking. Well, Peter, I'm drinking your bargain uh, energy drink wired at least it was uh you know i got one of those member cards at my grocery store it was on sale for a buck 11 for a can of it eddie murphy oh yeah he couldn't be at this because he was doing my girl wants to party on it that party on it that Oh, uh, dear. Diana Bryan says, I'm late again. Diana, no one was ever late to the show. At least to which you, good lady. From Shrewsbury, Shropshire. Uh, Lynette says, makeup. S oh, yes. Yeah. Say a little prep for me. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, Randy Ramos says, say goodnight, Gracie. Goodnight, Gracie. Uh, Terry Nee says, Eddie was there. Eddie Van Halen. Eddie, I don't think I had him on my list, but I don't think I had him on my list. Mm. Man. Daniel Bryan says, yes, I have Stevie Wonder's fingertips live up. And wherever he was playing, I listened to it from time to time. So perfect. Yeah. 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 I'm not even opening the phone lines. We only have about seven minutes left. What time is, isn't there a Rico on tonight? The special Rico, like it's probably nine Eastern or something. I'd, I'd uh, check those times and stuff. Oh, Eddie Rabbit? I don't think Eddie Rabbit. Oh, Eddie, no, Eddie Murphy was not there. No. Eddie Murphy was not there. He felt like an idiot for not being there, but he was not there. Let's see what time Rico's on tonight, if they've posted it yet. Those boys have been, uh, been playing fast and loose with the uh, start times lately. Playing a little fast and loose with their start times, you know what I mean? Oh, I don't see any show scheduled as of yet. I thought they said they were doing one later. Was I wrong about that? I could be wrong. Uh, let's see here. Toby McGrovey. No, Eddie Murphy wasn't there. I know Eddie Rabin wasn't there. There was a paucity of country stars there. Uh, Willie was a crossover star because he had he had... had uh, you know, to all the girls and on the road. He had some crossover stuff. Toby McGrovey says, sorry to hear that, Peter. My father's sick, too. We're all trying to save money up just in case. You know it's bad when you rip up and replace your own broken drain pipes instead of hiring a plumber. Well, if you want something done right, Toby. Uh, but that's, that's uh, good of you to help out, Toby. <clears throat> it's tough when, you're, when your parents are not well. Just kidding, says Shane. Well, Eddie and the Cruisers? 
<laughs> no, Eddie Vincent was not at the We the World, We Are the World recording. <laughs> they just had Rico at four. I know, but I thought there was another one coming up this evening. Tom, you're correct. I'm a lot older than you. <laughs> you're not a lot older. Oh, wait, aren't you just like earlier in the same month older than me? Dinah Bryan says, Ms. Lynette, is this Lynette we know, Tom? Well, I can't think of who else it would be. Sure it is. I'm sure it is. Exactly. I can still smell it. Uh, Toby, Peter, I hope all goes well. We all do. We hope for the best for you guys. We hope for the very, very best. I guess I could open up the phone lines since there's nothing scheduled. Let me just open up the phone lines. Whatever. I mean, I'll, I'll stay on for another 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes, even though I'm starving. Oh, Terry's 28 days older than me. I really should have gone to the grocery store and gotten the Parmesan. Uh, but I had stuff here, so I didn't. <laughs> Shane Martin. Eddie Cantor? No. Also, not Eddie Money. <laughs> uh, thanks thanks get the phone lines open let's see if old Tom's being hailed by the by the news organization today I doubt it I always have to check though just in case no, nothing 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 I'm a little surprised I haven't received any reports from you guys at my news anchoring. Uh, let's see. Here's Diana checking in on the net. Uh, Christina Costello Carnes breaking away from sanity is beautiful. All I know is Betty Davis eyes. I think there was one other song of hers that I'm aware of, but Eddie Cochran. No, not Eddie Cochran. Eddie Munster. No, not Eddie Munster. Eddie the Iron Maiden mascot. Not Eddie the Iron Maiden. Not Eddie the Eagle. Um, it was Eddie Munster. Christina Costello saying, have a great night, Tom. Christina, thank you for being here. Always nice to see you. Okay, so Eddie and the Cruisers. I already said no Eddie Vincent. We already covered that. Oh, it's the Shawnee Zones here. No, I can I can play my video at the end. It's not from Arizona. It's from Utah. Uh, let's see here. Yes. So go to the com. There's 270 podcasts. One of them is bound to intrigue you. Uh, there's our merchandise store. It's there as well. And you can get things like this. 20 ounce mug of coffee, which Terry Nee got. Look at that. That's a trash can with a handle on it, man. That's what that is. That's what that is. And, um, or you can go to paypal.me slash Tom Gully Show. We would seriously appreciate your donations till we get monetized. I think we're 341 in viewing hours away, which would put us sometime into late March, early April. But until then, daddy needs a new pair of shoes. Or you can go to our Patreon where all this stuff is that I'm scared to put on uh, the open internet. Uh, let's see here. Diana Bryan says, sums up or down? Is it Tom? I, I, oh, the sun's up. Yeah. We had this problem yesterday. Let me see. No, it's just behind a cloud right now. Uh, let's see. Uh, Lynette says she's doing better and says, nice to see her. Uh, the sun. Yeah. That happened yesterday. It's going to happen for a week or two. Probably, uh, crazy in the night is the other Karn song. I know says Rumpel trench coat. Shane Martin says, <clears throat> I have one of those 20 ounces, one with my logo on it. Purchased. Oh, by the way, right now, today on cafe press, it's mug mania or something. The prices are lower. They look the same on the <clears throat> on the uh, page where you buy it, 
but when you go to check out, it's lower. So if it's not lower and you wanted it to be lower, uh, you'll find out in the shopping cart. And and then if you don't want to pay that, then you don't pay it. I don't know what to tell you. Oh, well, you have one with my logo. Shane, thank you so much for buying one of those. I appreciate it. You can also get one of these clocks. There you go. A clock. Yeah. Get one of those clocks. Um, Diane O'Brien wishing good things. Oh, the phone lines are open. 972-994-6822. If anybody wants to call, I'll stay on for another 10 minutes since there aren't any other shows, huh? Think nothing of it. I'm starving. I'm making chimichangas after I get done with this. <coughs> Almost out of sour cream, but not quite enough that I can't make me a chimichanga. Almost. But not quite. Not quite. Yes, I'm very surprised that none of you have been listening on the giant radio station and, and uh, giving me your uh, reviews. It's very startling to me. I don't do nothing. I just say, something happened today. Here's somebody else to tell you about it. I ate already chicken off a tailgate grill. Well, Aku, you're the one that takes your grill to work and cooks in front of everybody, which I think is awesome. I think that is a bold move, my man. I like that. Terry Nee says 20 ounces, like a quarter of a pot of coffee. It's fabulous. Well, where's my thing? Uh, it's not in here right now. I have, I only, Terry, I only have a 16 ounce Contigo. If you guys haven't seen these Contigo thermos thing, drink, travel, whatever, they're amazing. When I go into the big fancy radio station at like three or four in the morning, when my uh, first news broadcast is like 530, I fill that. I, first thing I do when I get there is make coffee and I fill that thing up. But then I normally drink a couple Red Bulls or a Mountain Dew. Because I know I've got the coffee thing, you know, backup. And if I hit that thing at like 11 in the morning, it's still piping hot perfect. It is awesome. Contigo. I get nothing for that. And I'm promoting them. Akumugan says, have to. Takeout was murder on my wallet. Well, there you go. I like it just because you're torturing all the people that you work with with uh, delicious food on a grill. Shane says, I was putting my tea in it, but it was too watered down. Um, that's obviously Lynette responding to Diana. And uh, yeah, there we are. Phone lines are open, 972-994-6822. Oh, busy week last week, doing the middays with the big news team and an editor and all, oh, man, it was fabulous. It was the best thing ever. Was the best thing ever. Got to use my radio voice. <laughs> Got to bust that out on folks. It was... It's wonderful. Looking forward to doing it again. Got to learn things. I like learning things. Aku says, I've had several customers stop and ask when I'm opening a food truck. You ought to do a thing where, you know, because you don't want to get into the overhead of bringing food and then nobody orders anything and all that stuff. What you, what you should say is, look, you bring the food and I will cook it for you for a fee. Because then you're, you're just, you know, you have no overhead in purchasing whatsoever. You're just getting paid for that six or seven minutes that you put, you know. Am I hunkering down for the eclipse? 
Nah, probably just won't look at the sun. Although, I am very close to the path of tranquility. Very close. And people are... I know the Texas Hill Country is full of people. They've, they've, they're, all the hotels are super booked. Airbnb can't even find a place to stay April 8th or roundabouts that time. And I think it's coming near or over Austin. I don't think it's coming directly over Dallas, though. The Path of Tranquility. Yes. Akumugan says, takes about 20-ish, depending on if I boil water for the noodles. Yeah, but you could cook like a like a like a piece of fish or something really fast or chicken or uh, let me let me just hip you to guys to something here real quick cuz uh, the eclipse is coming up and uh man sorry <sighs> okay Path of totality, not tranquility. Okay. People viewing the eclipse from locations where the moon's shadow completely covers the sun, that's known as the path of totality. That's, those are the people that will be able to witness a total solar eclipse, 100%. See, because we have eclipses all the time. We have lunar eclipses. That's, that's if you see a half moon, that's an eclipse. It's just not a total eclipse. I hate it when people go, we're going to have eclipse. It's like you have eclipses almost every day. Uh, but the path of totality is that stretch of land that the moon's shadow travels through. So it's a path where, because of the Earth's orbit and everything else, you can uh, see that total solar eclipse. I don't recommend it. I mean, what what do you get out of that? It's like watching fireworks. It's like, have you seen fireworks before? Well, fireworks haven't changed in a million years. So, I mean, why are you watching it again or just watch them on TV? I could probably buy a video. It's probably on YouTube, a, a three-hour video of nothing but fireworks. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Aku says that will change once I build a windbreak for my single burner and I can start using my walk. Hey now. Uh, we have eclipses here uh, now and again and can never see them most of the time. So cloudy. That's, that's, that's terrible. That's terrible. Uh, Paz says, do you think the elites will do something crazy during the eclipse again? I think the elites are going to do something crazy, whether there's an eclipse or not. Total eclipse of the heart. Terry Nee, wondering why Bonnie Tyler was not invited to the We Are the World recording session. Although my favorite Bonnie Tyler song is I'm Holding Out for a Hero. Akumugan says, watch Japanese fireworks, Tom, and how they make them. Well, that, that and how they, the uh, Chinese make them is fascinating. But Path of Tranquility is all the bodies left behind. Okay. I, uh, I was at a fireworks show in Indianapolis one time where some of the fireworks got out of control and there was a giant explosion on top of the big bank building they were shooting. It was a disaster. But I see things uh and i'm like this is the opening to love american style i've seen fireworks my whole life and i've never seen anything since i was a child that made me go well that's different it's the same fireworks um shane martin quite incisively asks was it because she's welsh well that's part of it <laughs> probably Where are all the Hercules and where are all the gods? Where's that streetwise Superman? Oh, yeah, I love it. I, I love holding out for a hero.
Isn't there a white knight upon us? Something, Steve. I don't know. It's just a, you know. A moon or sun eclipse is awesome. I love the experience. Yeah. I mean, people people like it. It's fine. I like how on cameras now you can actually see the surface of the moon. You can, you know. I, I, I don't know. I, I'm never going there, so I don't look up in the sky that much. I do like it when the moon is bright and you can see easier at night. But other than that, and I will tell you this. When you live in an extremely remote area, like say, for example, um, if I lived in a, I don't want to get into that. Never mind. I'm not going to get into that. If you live in a super remote area where, say, the population density is one person per mile or less, uh, where I used to live, then you're also at seven, eight, nine, maybe even 10,000 feet above sea level <clears throat> and you're so far away from any city that has lots of bright light you won't believe the amount of stars that you can see and how actually bright it can be at nighttime that uh, it's not pitch black dark it's it's amazing uh, when you get out there and you look up, you don't need binoculars, you don't need a telescope, nothing. And it's just a blanket of stars and nothing in between, nothing in between. Sometimes the cloud cover comes in and it's pitch black and all that. But, uh, when, when you get into cities and other areas with lots of light, it affects everything. And then, it's a long story. I don't want to get into it, but um, if you could go into space, would you just to go? No. I know some guys that wanted to go down to where the Titanic was recently. It didn't work out too well for him. I'd need a reason. Is there a super hot girl there waiting for me or to go on a date or they have a white castle there. I mean, I would need a reason. I would need a reason. Terry says you can have an eclipse every day from Mitsubishi. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. Shane says can't even see Betelgeuse around here anymore. No, you can't. The universe in all of its glory. Hey, Tom. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't. Uh, begrudge people that want to do that, but we just had another SpaceX rocket explode or didn't do what it was supposed to do. I, I, uh, I, I needed a reason for me to risk my life in an adventure. I've climbed up on top of mountains before because I wanted to know how to climb up on top of a mountain in case I ever had to do it. And, uh, there's lots of mountains that you can get to the top of that you don't have to go up rock, you know, believe it or not, or not very much rock. You can traverse them, you can get over them without doing that. Um, when I was a lad on the farm, I loved running the fields and laying in the long grass, staring into the galaxies above. Yeah, I like doing that, but I don't want to, you know, one of my favorite phrases is, let's light this candle. And I never knew where it came from. I just heard people say it. And it turns out it comes from the space program. Alan Shepard was in the rocket that was going to shoot him into space. And the scientists were worried, <clears throat> NASA, NASA engineers, that, that something was going to go wrong or, or was going wrong. And he just said, let's just light this candle. And he's like, hey, come on, man. This thing's got a million parts in it. <laughs> ah, the wolf. What's really cool is only me and the wolf know what this means right here. And he's probably laughing, and I know I'm laughing. 
I only care about the moon and its gibbous phase. <laughs> yeah, well, you can see that if you go absorpine. Go absorpine. Uh... <laughs> 40 years later, and it's funny. Uh, Ronald Bateman, who has been to the condo for Bushmills, says that was the best part of living out in the desert was a beautiful night's checking out the stars. Maybe a bottle of Chateau de Papa. I don't know about that. I don't do no drinking. Uh, Shane Martin says, waning gibbous? It might have been waxing gibbous. I don't know. Terry Neen says, I was at Sun Valley, Idaho, and went out at night and saw stars in Milky Way, which... Left an indelible mark in my memory. It's amazing. Yeah, it, it it's like you have never seen the stars at night before. It it is because the sky isn't just a backdrop. There's um, depth to it. There's a there's a resonance to the, even the sky. You know, behind the stars, and it looks blue. It's not. It's, it's, it's a tinge of blue, a dark blue. It's, it, it's just amazing. It's, 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 uh, but, but if you live next to a all-night parking lot, you're not going to see that because the, all that light reflecting, it's just not... Uh, it, it's a long story. There's, there's, a, um, there's a thing called dark skies that uh, is a practice on the part of many towns that they limit the amount of nighttime commercial light that is uh, emitted uh, for certain businesses at certain hours because they want to bring back that ability to see the night sky. Very controversial. Uh, the wolf says, I don't do no drinking either unless it's liquor. L-I-K-K-E-R or pure grain alcohol. <laughs> I can understand how sailors could navigate by the stars. Yeah, there ain't no light out there. None whatsoever. Um, we used to... We used to do some crazy things, me and the chief. Never mind. Wayne Gabes. I just wished I could show you how to do it. Anyway, a lot of stories. The Wolf and I have a lot of stories. Uh, uh, Diane O'Brien says, at five foot one in height, any mountain is huge and scary to me. I'd love to be able to conquer the fear, but I don't think it's ever going to happen. Well, Diana, there are portions of mountains and ridges, certainly, uh, along mountain ridges that you can hike up and you'll see large giant rocks and boulders but there are pathways you're not on top of the mountain you're not on the edge of the mountain you can go over that way if you want to have a look but you're on a, a you know like a flat open area and you just keep going up and up and up and up and up and up and at a certain point yeah you'll reach rock that you might have to climb over but you know, you, you you can get to quite an altitude. There's a picture, I think it's the cover picture on my personal Facebook page, uh, where I'm way up there, and I'm not, I haven't used any crampons or pitons or carabiners or anything like that. I just walked up there. Uh, like Brokeback stuff. Never seen Brokeback. <laughs> Don't even know what you're talking about. Uh, now the, the wolf, uh, used to get into quite a lot of adventures in, uh, college that were, um, way over the top and, and some would say unbelievable. And because I lived near the wolf on the dormitory floor and became friends with the wolf and would occasionally go out in the evening with the wolf, well, you just got caught in the undertow of those adventures. There's nothing you could do about it. Um, oh, look out. Ice cream. Yeah, there's that stupid idiot. I shouldn't say that. It's terrible to say about somebody. But yeah, 719 at night, and he's 
trying to sell ice cream. What what's the temp right now? Just coming by here annoying people. What's the temp? 65 degrees. Yeah, we're all dying for some ice cream. Um <clears throat> it's just annoying. It's just annoying. Uh, Kahuna says in Hawaii, the big island, all outdoor commercial lighting has to be yellow lights because of Mauna Kea Observatory. You can easily see the stars there. It's amazing. Good. <clears throat> MG, MG. That's not a sports car, kids. That means more gas, if clear. <laughs> Diana Bryan says, it's not going up. It's coming down. I'm not fond of. Well, it is steep. It is steep. Winston Wolf. Not Winston Wolf. The wolf is on the way. Winston Wolf needs his own movie. To be honest with you. If you ask me, I want to see a, win a movie just about Winston Wolf. I don't care about the rest of them. <coughs> if my speech is curt, it's because time is a factor. So pretty please. Uh, I'm free here. I think that's about all we got. I'm gonna close the phone lines down. Every time I open them up, nobody calls anyway. I might as well just, you know. Teen Wolf. Well, let me see. When I knew the wolf, was the wolf a teen? No, I think he was 20. I think he's two years older than me. Uh, but prior to that, he was Teen Wolf. Uh, Terry Nee says, I tried driving an MG too tall. All right, let's put it this way. I saw the wolf run, and I mean run, and I mean run so fast I could hardly keep up with him, and I played soccer with a full keg on his shoulder. A full keg. It was over in Botswin. I remember that. Just the wolf. <laughs> Oh, uh, Terry Nee says he tried driving an MG. It was too tall. Uh, Terry Nee says, send Jake a link. I don't think so. I'll just send Jake a link. Uh, Tom Wolf, the author. No, not Tom Wolf, the author either. No, not that person either. <laughs> you guys with your crazy zaniness. I tell you what. I, th I bet I, I, I'm going to say something. To somebody about this guy coming through here every night is it's just gotten to be silly. It's just gotten to be absolutely silly with this, you know, cruising through here at eight and nine o'clock at night during sixty degree weather, trying to sell ice cream just with his loud turkey in the straw. Come on, man, put you know. Put, put a song on. We like Karen Garvey has joined us. Is sorry I'm late. Send Wolf a link. Uh, Wolf knows he can call in anytime. But I just closed the phone line, so it's anytime but now. Hmm. Full speed, four flights of stairs, and they were those you know dorm stairs where you had a up landing up. That's one floor. He was moving. Full keg. I was just trying to keep up with him so I could open the doors. <laughs> we got to the top. I don't know if the wolf even remembers that. He forgets a lot of this stuff because he did so many crazy things. It was over in Botsford, Swinford. I want to say that was over there where Buff lived or so. I can't remember. I don't know. Who was over there, but we were over there. That was the honors dormitory. <sighs> Wolf and I both got like Dean's list grades, but we didn't want to live in the honors dormitory. <laughs> it's too boring. Spike Strip, the ice cream guy. Wouldn't be hard because there's speed bumps throughout the neighborhood here. So he's going at ice cream driver speed to begin with, and then he's got to slow down for the bumps. But the other night it was raining, and I mean torrential rain, and I came out on my porch on the front and waited for him and just went, what? What? And this dude, he's completely, head's completely shaved. 
He looks a little rough. He's always got a cigarette hanging out of one hand of the place, and then he's driving with the other hand. And this was like almost 9 o'clock at night. Where was the wolf heading? Why was he running? He's, well, he's not allowed to have that in the dormitories. So he was sneaking it up there. Uh, the wolf says, I'm eating chicken with hot sauce and chopsticks. That's another thing about the wolf. When you go somewhere to eat with him, he orders three entrees, me three meals. He's a bodybuilder. Uh, Diana says, we have the same here each night with our ice cream man. Cold pouring down, he drives like a speed, speedy guns off. This guy doesn't, if he drove through here fast, I wouldn't be able to hear the dumb song. And by the way, if he just would replace the song, I wouldn't have a problem with it. But every night, you know, if he, if he had Don't Stop Believing or some cool, you know, no. It's it's turkey in the straw. Uh, the wolf says, you don't want to get caught carrying a keg into the dorm. No. Um, Shani says, Teen Wolf does order a keg of beer, remember. I'm not super familiar with that movie, but I get all the Teen Wolf movies mixed up, even though... Jason was it Jason Bateman that played him in the other movie? I I, I get they all get mixed up for me. I, Terry Nee says I'm going to write a screenplay about a man annoyed by an ice cream man. Little did he know the ice cream man was a psychopath that preyed on complainers. Yeah, well, in your screenplay, you might want to flip the script on that, and the ice cream man didn't know how heavily armed one of the people that had a show that he interrupted every night was. Flip the script a little on that. What I'm going to do, green sleeves, that would be equally annoying. I've threatened this before, and I swear I'm going to do it one of these days. I'm going to go to the grocery store, and I'm going to get like ice cream sandwiches or push-ups or ice cream bars or something. And the first time during the summer, because during the summertime, occasionally someone will go out there, uh, that he comes by, I'm going to run out there because because a box of ice cream sandwiches is like $3 or something. I'm going to run out there and go, hey, kids, how'd you like some free ice cream sandwiches? And do that every time till he realizes... You know, too many movies about that ice cream killer. <laughs> yeah, really. Remember Dexter? <laughs> you know, and that's the other thing is I would tell these kids' parents. It's like, what are you giving them a buck and a quarter for a bomb pop? You can buy a box of those for three bucks. Incidentally, there is a problem. When you can't buy boxes of Choco Tacos, now I'm, I bet you they sell them, but I can't find them around here. The only place you, that I can get a Choco Taco is in that individual case, like at a convenience store, sometimes a grocery store, but it's in that case where they sell individual stuff. I want a whole box of Choco Tacos. Hell yeah, brother. If you hand out free ice cream, please record it. Oh, I will. On that, you may rely. Name your screenplay Brain Freeze. <laughs> Terry Knee. Name it... Name it The Bad Humor Man. Hmm? I think that's a pretty good one. The Bad Humor Man. All right, we're getting to the end of this. Much as we'd like to all... <laughs> Help Terry make a million dollars on his screenplay. Oh, dear. Hey, man, thanks for all you guys being here. I don't know what tomorrow's show's about. It might be 1960s slang. It might be the guy that invented the question mark. I don't know. I never know till during the day. But, um, yeah. With all that being said, I guess the only thing left to say is, till next time, 
We'll see you next time.